Vintage Snowmobile. My name is Al Pinckney. Uh, this will be part seven of the W project where we are building a vintage ice racing snowmobile for use on the ice oval racing circuit here in Saskatchewan. I've got a lot of footage uh, taken and, and loaded onto the computer that is not edited or uploaded yet. We're into the middle of June now and a busy summer schedule so we can't donate a lot of time to the actual build. Um, the sled is partially built right now. But tonight's episode will be the steering. Um, how we're going to reinforce things, uh, lots of modifications, a little bit of lathe work uh, in the shop and I hope you enjoy and uh, we will uh, let you watch the video and, and if you like it Click, uh, click the like button. Thank you. So we're in shop number two now. Where is, uh, this is our summer shop and it hasn't been cleaned up so I apologize. But nothing is rehearsed on my videos. You're seeing real life. Some guys tend to clean their shops and make everything rosy. But uh, not here. I'm, uh, I'm here to make a video. And a sled. Not history. Anyway, here's my handy dandy portable hacksaw. I think, I don't even know what make it is, but Porter Cable. But we'll lop this bar off. And now we'll do some measuring, make sure we cut the other one off the right length. Here's our XLT donor handlebar. Again, all we're after is the top adjustable flange, mounting flange, the bottom, because of the uh, IFS type suspension on that sled, the, the bottom end won't, won't work. You know, I like it, it's got a grease nipple on it, but won't be able to use that. set of TX handlebars for sale. Anybody like them? They just need a little work at the bottom end. Probably be make, make somebody happy someday. see if we can splice the two together. Now we want this to be super duper strong. We don't want this to crack on the racetrack in a corner and jeopardize my life. Although I am insured but I think the wife needs me for a little longer. How do you weld that? Well you could, and I'm not a welder by any means. I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty rough character that way but at any rate uh, a butt weld I wouldn't trust. What I'll do is I'll make a, an insert for those pipes, a piece of uh, good steel, and uh, I'll show you that I'll drill through either side and weld probably five points plus right around. The problem is those two tubes are different in, in their diameter. I've run into this before. Now luckily I have an old clousing lathe that I can turn out a slug that will fit both and uh, it'll, it'll be strong. So at any rate, the XLT bar looks to be, it's uh, 661. So just under the five, just over five eighths. Six, uh, six sixty thousandths, and the 
TX bar. Is 705. So we'll we'll find a piece of steel and we'll turn out a slug that will make both these happy. Our target measurement is uh, 660 and we're at 730. So we'll uh, take a 20 thousandths cut and see how it performs. A little bit heavier cut. So we're, if we're at 730 thousandths with a 20 thousandths cut each side, we should be at 693 with a target of 660 thousandths. So I hope our math is good. And we're at 694. So if we take another 10 thousandths, we'd be at 6, seven. we'll take 15 thousandths cut. Now this is not precision work. It's just a slug to help the welding process. Take 15 thousandths, a little bit of lube. I don't like the aerosol because half ends up on the floor and half on the target. She measure out at now 659 660 so we're dead on that might not go on all that well yet unfortunately I uh, I'll take the lathe out the cross slide one That'll be a total of three turns. Now we should derag, or as John Mills would say, derag that. But I think we're a little tight yet. We'll just take a light cut. strike to just a little bit loose but again for what we're doing here we're happy I'd be really pissed off if I needed that to be a perfect tolerance so that's one side cut Trying to back it out three turns at a time so that our we have enough clearance to try our other two. There, that's much better. Much better. Almost looks like we know what we're doing this time. Right. Here we have the lower end, and that's a nice fit for our joiner piece. And the upper, which did work out to be a little bit loose, but we're happy. Now, uh, what I'll do is I'll chamfer those 
end so we can get a little bit of a bead in there. We might even leave it a little bit apart when we weld it just to, so we get some penetration. I'll also drill some holes in the tube so that we have another spot for a good tack weld either side and it'll be good enough. Strong. So we've clamped this into Indy Rob's drill press and we'll drill a hole. This is the the lower upper tube, sorry, and uh, see if we can put a hole through there just for just for we can put a tack weld in the top of the tube. Now that bit doesn't look all that true. And it probably isn't. But believe it or not, it must be one of my sharper ones. So the end result is our precision fit end. I don't think my, oh I got a big bad hammer over here, you'll like this. Just for a little bit of gentle persuasion. I know this one will go easy. Remind me to clean the other side out as well. There you have it. So we can uh, now I'll probably use my arc welder for this. This is all fairly heavy material and I'll get a better penetration than the little MIG welder that I have. Uh, we have to be very careful how we line things up so we'll uh, try to get that right. We could weld one side and then uh, be really careful about the other side. So back to shop number two where the welder lives. This is the, the TX bottom part spliced to the XLT top part for the, for the round bar mount. And there's the welding job. As I say, I'm not a welder so I tend to build it up and grind it off and build it up and grind it off so if you're selling welding rods and grinding discs I'm probably your, be your best customer but uh, structurally you'll be very strong so our next step is to install the steering column and the tie rods and spindles and that so we can move this sled off the hoist. We have another job coming in. So we'll try to get all this together. Sometimes it would really help to have a second set of hands around here. But Jenny is uh, sort of tired today. I do have a better set of bushing mount assemblies for here uh, just so we can get the sled together and just out of the way for a few days I, I'm going to use the player stock mount but there is a better a little bit more solid those bolts are not tight yet. So we uh, we're just working on the tie rod ends. Now I straightened this shaft a certain amount and uh, we could use a little more by the looks of it but a trick that we've done and uh, has already been done to the main shaft going across is just to tap a piece of half inch uh, EMT steel conduit, electrical conduit over the tube and makes it less prone to bending and a bit heavier unfortunately so we've got a, a nice piece cut out here we polish it up on the lathe and and we'll tap it on this shaft now it's a little bent but it'll probably hold the tube a little better too for that matter and it's just a friction fit we'll tap it in uh, with a hammer 
pick up the hammer. Heavy duty. Now the part of the problem is this will cause a clearance issue in the TX tunnel. This is the tie rod that comes from the steering column on this end over to the uh, pitman arm or tie rod arm or whatever you want to call it. So I, I know that there will be a clearance issue here but we'll uh, work on that later. So there's our tie rod ends ready to go. We'll probably give them a coat of paint and uh, work on the other piece parts that that will need paint. We're into the paint mode. Uh, waiting for traction product studs for the track to come in. We had something we thought we'd use but I just don't want to do it twice so we'll do it right the first time hopefully. I was fortunate to have bought up a couple of new old stock uh, uh, part stocks from some dealers. This is Bombardier or Skidoo part and uh, as much as I don't want to admit it, it is a superior to the OEM Polaris which is kind of a stamped metal arrangement and uh, they're all pretty sloppy and we'll be you know quite fortunate to have some of these. Now this is the reverse thread version and I, I do have to go dig for some of the uh, right hand thread versions for that tie rod but that should virtually take all the slop and play out of our steering when we're done with it. You don't want no slop and play in your steering you know. We've given our uh, left hand spindle a good coat of grease I wish I had to put my stack of shims on first, but the more grease the merrier. So the spindles keep wanting to fall out again, I work by myself, so it would be kind of nice to have a helper, but we're just going to prop those up there, and we've drilled the spindles for uh, 7 16 bolts, a little bit heavier, um, which I'm not sure I have in stock right now, a good grade 8 fine thread bolt, So, and I would like to have 5 16 rod to run from one spindle to the other, for a kind of an initial ski alignment, but all I have is 3 8 but that should get us close enough so we can put our uh, our steering arms on and uh, lock them down and then we'll do a final final ski alignment that goes on when the skis and carbides are are finalized. So there's the rod through. I don't know how many times I'll snag that with my leg or other private parts before we're done. That's the hazards of the job, man. Well, I owe everybody an apology, anybody that's watching. I made a statement that the Bombardier tie rod ends, new old stock, were superior. And they are. They're a tighter fit and they're so forth, as opposed to the what I found on the Polaris OEM. The problem is, the Polaris unit 
it was quite a bit longer than the bomb uh, the Polaris unit is longer than the Bombardier unit therefore the nice tie rod that I built is too short I can't get uh, left to right or from the steering column to the uh, right spindle so what I have to do is lengthen one of these rods uh, what I'll do is cut it off and cut a, uh, a another uh, just a short one off that has the right thread there's a left hand thread and a right hand thread on either end so you can adjust and then tap it and use some uh, stud and bearing mount the real good Loctite and put the aluminum tube over so we'll we'll make it longer and we'll make it stronger so we can utilize those so that'll you know that'll cost us a couple hours in farting around work but uh, you know that's that's why we're here so again I apologize I overlooked that So what we have done, we cut this, the too short tie rod off and made a piece one inch longer and tapped the inside 3 8 16. Uh, we have some nice 3 8 16 rod here and I carefully measured how far. I've got about an inch and a half in either end which should do the trick. What we have here is uh, they call it stud and bearing mount, uh, bearing mount, and it is uh, a permanent Loctite type material. We hope we have some left here. Start that in one one of our tie rods. I just want to make sure this will start for us. Looks like it will. And I've marked the center of the of the threaded rod with some uh, yellow paint just to make sure that sort of like when you're pipe fitting you got to make sure you're threaded all the way. Now that should be a permanent repair. But once we get on the racetrack we'll find out maybe the hard way. So the front tie rod installed. We didn't uh, we weren't able to put a piece of tubing over this for now. We've got to find some. I didn't have a length that was straight enough and nice enough. Um, something I learned years ago while working on communications towers is you put a bolt in so that you can see that it's loose. So by putting the nut up, if it becomes loose, you'll see there's a problem. And between heats, a person should look over his steering, make sure that the bolts haven't loosened off or you need to lose the heat or lose your life and limb because of a loose bolt, as we've seen happen here in Saskatchewan. So anyway, those are torqued down and uh, may, it may look like a lot of thread exposed, but there's a good inch inside here. 
on both sides so we're uh, uh, good there and we'll just have to keep an eye on our splice as we race but I do intend on reinforcing that next is the back one which is also too short for the same reason So we've got the, the short tie rod from the steering column to the right side, uh, lengthened by two and three eighths inches, and uh, it might be a little on the long side. Our, if we're pointed straight ahead, then our steering column is canted a little bit to the right, but that's kind of the way they want it, so that's come along quite nicely. This is our heavy duty ski saddle um, which also has to be drilled out to be 5 16 and we'll tap a 5 16 thread in there. So we'll drill out the threaded part first because I happen to have that drill in the, the drill bit in the drill right now. Well, here you have the finished product. Now this is far from dialed in. It's going to need some tweaking. Um, I'm not sure this is going to work out. But I was told that if you work one tie rod against the other, then you remove all slop in the steering, left to right anyway which uh, makes good sense to me. I'm a little worried about bump steer. If one ski goes up it's going to want to pull the other one in. But uh, this is easily taking off, taken off so we'll... But, but I have it on good authority that it does tighten the front end up considerably so that has taken a long time to get right but uh, here we are. Should be strong enough and uh, yeah, our steering is in place so we could throw some old skis on it now and and uh, maybe get this sled out of the way. Clint Eastwood thinks it's just fine. <laughs> 